I'm what most people refer to as a mountain man. You know, living off the land and working with my bare hands, that kind of stuff. I know, big shocker. The wild men have access to technology. Well, we're not cavemen. Just people who enjoy living in the wilderness. I was always one of those people. Until recently, anyways. I lived in a small log cabin, cozy enough for a 34-year-old man with a strange interest in carving and wood chopping. Now, I wasn't completely out in the wilderness. There was a small town about 7 miles away, but still secluded enough to feel the peace and tranquility of living in nature. Not to mention secluded enough to be completely alone. Anyways, one night after finishing putting the chicken and roosters away, I sat on my porch enjoying the stars and moon. As I sat, I lit my pipe and I heard this strange sound, almost like a mix of a bird cooing and a chirping grasshopper. Seeing as how I was the only home for miles, I chalked it up to animals. I mean, what else could it be right? As strange as the sound was, it was also kind of soothing. After listening for a moment, the whistling stopped quite abruptly. It was strange. The moment the whistling ended, so did the rest of the world's sounds. I couldn't hear the wind blowing, or the running stream out back. It was as if somebody had hit the mute button on my property. It was so quiet that I could have easily mistaken my breathing for a wailing beast. But just as I was about to question my sanity, suddenly, the sounds of nature returned. I put my pipe out and made my way back inside. After making myself a nice hearty meal, you would expect a wild man to eat. Lots of meat, along with a hefty nice glass of bourbon. I began cleaning my kitchen, and I was about to wrap the leftovers. The cuckoo clock above my stove began while cooing. Now, that doesn't sound like anything crazy, but the thing is, that clock has been busted for years and it's been nothing more than a wall decoration. And as I thought, the clock was still broken. In fact, it wasn't even cooing. It was that whistle I had heard moments before my dinner. And once again, as it ended, for a few moments so did my hearing. I chalked it up to a long day of labor, so I decided that I would hit the hay. And that's when things got weird. As I awoke and prepared myself for another day of hard work, I noticed something. The dinner from last night, the one I never got to finish wrapping, was completely gone off the plate. I tried to reason with myself that maybe I had finished it, but yet the plate and saran wrap were both sitting out there on the counter. You see, I'm not normally a superstitious person, so I again reasoned with myself that I had finished it before having the chance to wrap it up. After all, that glass of bourbon was pretty large, so I brushed it off and I went on about my day. I went to let out my poultry for feeding when I saw, well, a pretty messed up sight. My chickens had been completely butchered. It wasn't the fact that my chickens were dead that made me unsettled. I mean, I've lost plenty of them to wild animals, looking for a quick snack to eat. But that's the thing. None of my chickens had any signs of being eaten of any kind. They were all mutilated. Some were impaled along the picket fence that was used to keep them in. And not neatly either. No, they were so torn off that the shiny white wood had been dyed with the red crimson blood of my poor birds. Two of them were completely hollowed out. No bones, no organs, and no muscle tissue. 
It was no more than an empty sack of chicken skin. Whatever did this wasn't looking for a meal. It was in it for the thrill of the hunt. After that, I decided some precautions needed to be taken. So, I took a trip down to town. Luckily for me, a technical store was opened not too long ago. So, I decided to purchase some security cameras. Nay, hey, you're that wild forest dude who lives in the woods, right? The young clerk asked as he rang up my items. He had to be no more than 18. The classic, old enough to grow facial hair, but not enough to grow a full beard look. Grungy hippie clothes and he gave off a strong aroma of purple haze and pineapple express. It reminds me of when me and my brother would grow pot in our backyard in high school. And despite being a goofy high schooler, he was a good kid. Had a very love, not war vibe to him. I let out a laugh as I reached for my wallet. I didn't know I had that much of a reputation. He returned my laughter and quickly replied, Dude, you're a legend around school. Everyone out here is too formal, you feel me? You though, living off the land, doing things with your own two hands. It's freaking hardcore, bro, he exclaimed, almost as if he was fanboying over me. I looked at his shiny name tag, which read Spliffy. I chuckled at the nickname. I proceeded to complete my transaction when he asked me, What's with all the tech then? I paused for a moment, leading to him continuing his question. My man, you've been living the frontier life since I was in pre-K. Why the sudden change up? I've been hearing some noises in the woods. Not like anything I've heard before. It messed up some of my birds pretty bad. I said as I handed the boy my credit card. So, just some weird sounds then. He continued, running my card through the scanner. After a brief pause, I decided to mention the strange anomaly of the world going mute. Well, it's not exactly a strange noise, just a whistle. But for some reason, every time the whistling stopped, I can't hear anything but my breath. When I said that, Spliffy got rather concerned. Dude, you're dealing with a woodstalker. I raised my eyebrow. A what? He got eager, no doubt, ready to tell me of what I could only assume was a cryptid, which of course he did. A woodstalker, or a tree skin prowler as it's known in Indian folklore. It's believed that they were said to be the great omen for forest and woodland areas. I looked at the boy before, beginning to ask my own questions. I tried to convince myself that I was simply indulging his tale. But deep down, a part of me believed it could be what I was dealing with. So then, what's with the whistling? He continued as he began bagging my items. Well, according to the Native Americans, whenever hunters or gatherers would go for an exposition and never return, it was followed by a long whistle, which was then followed by complete silence. The Indians tried connecting the dots and they came to the conclusion that the whistle would come either right before or after disposing a victim. Well, I'll keep a lookout for walking trees then, I laughed. As I placed my card back in my wallet and I grabbed my items. Yeah man, good luck. You're really gonna need it. He said, rather seriously. I left and entered my truck. The whole ride debating this woodstalker. Then my sanity for even entertaining the idea. I arrived home and got to work on setting up the cameras. Making sure to put an extra behind the house toward the woods. The rest of the day went completely fine, assuming I had scared off whatever creatures were around. So, I enjoyed a nice meal and a tall glass of ale. It wasn't until later that it all went wrong. I awoke to the sound of my dog, Curtis, barking violently. 
once again followed by the now disturbing whistles and its proceeding silence. I instantly ran to my camera monitors and witnessed the strangest thing. Curtis had been sitting at the edge of the tree line, just sitting there for like three hours. It wasn't until I saw a large rustle around the woods that he started barking and then running into the woods. I ran to my room, grabbing my rifle along with a box of shells and rushing to the door. Curtis was the only family that I had, and I'd be damned if I let some tree monster take him from me. I burst it open at the back door, day near busting it off its hinges, and made a break to the woods. After about ten minutes, the whistle returned, louder than ever before. And despite the following silence, I could still see the bushes tussling in front of me. I quickly raised my rifle, slowly relaying the safety, and out came Curtis. I took a quick sight of relief, and I went to pet him. However, he just kept running back towards the house. Before I could turn around and follow him, I heard another wailing, but it wasn't any animal or monster. It was a human cry. I rushed to the sound as quickly as possible. Might be a monster out here, but I'm not letting anyone die on my property. The screaming got louder and louder, till I finally reached the source. It was... It was the kid from the electronics store. He had been completely torn up. His chest caved in. His legs were broken to hell. He looked like a graph, and his left forearm had been laying on the right side of his body. I rushed over to the kid, kneeling down to comfort him. Let's be honest, there was no way he was making it out of these woods alive. Jesus Christ, kid. What are you doing out here? You know what was out here, he wheezed, coughing up thick red blood. I wanted to help, he said between gargled coughs. He reached up with his one still attached arm and grabbed my collar, pulling me closer to him. You need to run, he whimpered, just in time for me to hear before the haunting whistle came directly behind me. I turned around, quickly stumbling back as I came face to face with it. The thing looked like something straight out of a J.R.R. Tolkien novel. Broken twigs and branches twisted to make the form of the creature's body. It's cracked, jagged bark seeming to form some kind of scales or armor or something. The most disturbing part was its face. The same one I was looking down to as it was telling me to run. And no, this isn't some leather-faced gene situation. The thing didn't steal the kid's face. It was more like copying it. It had been carved into some sort of tribal mask and it was disturbingly accurate. You could see the pain and suffering on the boy's wooden face. I was stuck on my butt, paralyzed from fear, as this thing slowly limbered toward me, snapping wood echoing through the woods with each motion. As I slowly began to push myself away from the creature, I was reminded I wasn't completely screwed as I felt my palm brush against my rifle. I quickly scooped it up, aiming for the beast, and fired. It recoiled, letting out a hiss of pain. Seeing as it actually had an effect, I continued to fill it with buckshot, till there was a pile of empty shells at my feet. Not wanting to test fate, I bailed my butt back home and fortified it to the nines. The next morning, I had called the police about the boy's body. 
when I brought them to the location of the body, which was still there, but not the creatures, not even a branch was left behind. They had chalked it up to a rather gruesome bear attack. I wasn't going to argue with them on it. What would have happened if I told the truth anyways? Probably would have been put behind bars or in a padded wall. I've moved to the city since then. A decent apartment on a real high floor and far from any forest. That thing is still out there. And I have a feeling... It's never left my trail to begin with.